Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on? Um, we're live. We got a few people in here, 24, and um, hope you guys had a great day. I love doing these live streams. I try to get one in about once a month or once every couple months. So um, I wanted to do a video on the three biggest mistakes that I see, and that's mostly gathering information from emails from you. Thank you very much for reaching out. Uh, or on my website, I get messages. And um, I thought I would share this information because this is just good information to share. I think it'll make our industry better if we start um, just going over these very common mistakes that I think um, if they're corrected, that it'll save a lot of shower failures and a lot of bad tile jobs. And before we begin, I want to um, just talk a little bit about um, uh, we basically have a skilled labor crisis in our country right now. Um, we have a huge shortage of skilled tile installers. Um, so what that's done is left uh, tile installation up to um, homeowners a lot of time, DIYers. Um, or people who normally wouldn't do tile work, who are maybe, you know, work in other trades, um, they jump in and do the tile work. So um, that's a problem that we have. We can't really deny it. So um, when I get comments about, you know, sharing this information is, is hurting our trade, um, I don't believe so, because these are jobs that would be happening anyways, because people can't afford um, good tile guys a lot of the time. Um, tile has become somewhat of a luxury item. And um, so th that's that's just where we find ourselves. So my hope is, is that by sharing some of this information, it can help you avoid um, some catastrophic water damage, basically is what we're seeing in a lot of this stuff. So um, hello, hello, Jason. Littlefields, Trump goaded night. Hello, guys. Good to see you here. And um, so the three biggest mistakes I will talk about, um, I think that the first one, probably the most common is the mixing of the two most common methods of doing tiled shower pans. So we basically have two. I know we're starting to get into a few more, I guess, like the weedy method would be kind of a different one, but we basically have two. We have the old school, which is the pan liner or a hot mop that we do here in California, where you have um, basically like a weep style system. Um, this is a typical drain that you would use in an old school installation. It usually has a, a uh, bottom flange, three piece drain, clamping ring like this. And so this is this has been around, this type of system has been around ever since I've known doing tile. We see them in jobs that were done in the 50s and 60s. So been around a long time. You typically use a pan liner with these. So that would be like the old school way of doing it. And then the new systems would be like the curdy or the bonded systems, which require um, a bonding flange drain like this. So I would say probably the biggest mistake that I see that's easily correctable is that we need to stop combining these two systems. We um, so often I'll get a I'll get an email that'll have something like um, you know they'll have one of these drains. They'll have an old school drain, and they think they can tie Curdy into it. Right. They'll, they'll put this down and then they'll put Curdy down and then they'll put their deck mud on top of it. And that's the wrong way to do it. If you have Curdy or Red Guard, you can do roll on waterproofings with these guys, too. You want to use one of these bonding flange drains, either a flow effects or a Curdy bonding flange or Laticrete. Um, so that's that's one of the big mistakes, because the way that these guys work is the pan liner is down here. And then you put the drain, actual drain body on top. This guy goes in here. Let me uh, focus in on this. Um, and then you fill this area in with mortar. So the waterproofing's down here. You have dry pack mortar, and then you have tile that goes up to here. Uh, with the bonded systems, they're meant to go right underneath 
the tile. So it's two different systems. So um, I also see um, using a pan liner and then not using the pan liner correctly, thinking, thinking that you can just go over everything else with red guard afterwards. So that's typically what I see. I see someone put in a pan liner and then a lot of times they don't do a pre-slope. So that's one of the things with the old school systems. You also need a pre-slope. The new Curdy stuff, you do not need a pre-slope. It's only one float. So they'll take uh, a pan liner and then maybe they'll wrap it up over the curb, but they don't use, um, you know, they don't use the preformed vinyl corners that go with the pan liners. They won't wrap over the curb correctly. Um, they'll screw hardy backer through the curb um, or Duroc screw it through the curb, puncturing the pan liner. And then they figure, oh, well, I'm just going to put red guard over it. And this is kind of, this is like basically the star tile method. And they figure they put red guard over everything. But again, you're, you're combining two separate systems that aren't meant to go together. And there is no way to get a good seal with that red guard up against the drain because the water will just pool there and eventually it'll leak and it'll seal. And that causes even a bigger problem because now the system isn't being used as it was designed to be used. So um, red guard is meant like curdy, it's meant to get wet, dry out, and then get used again. But if it sits in a puddle like that, those failures will start to happen. And what happens if you have a pan liner and then mortar and then red guard on top, you're creating what they call a mold sandwich because that water just sits in there stagnant and then it's gonna end up rotting things out, especially if you've screwed through uh, the pan liner with screws. So that's the other thing I see. Um, I've actually seen a pan liner, you know, doing a typical pan liner, they'll do a pre-slope, a pan liner, uh, float their mortar and then put one of these on top of it. <laughs> and so again, that's not the correct use for this drain because um, again, you have a pan liner down here. This drain doesn't have any weep holes. So again, that whole pan liner is going to fill up with water and it's going to find a way out. It's just going to be soaking mold mess and nasty. So I've seen that uh, a few different times. Uh, and then I would say uh, also you'll also see people use a pan liner because they get the pan liner and curdy fabric. You figure waterproofing membrane, it's the same, right? They think a pan liner is the same as curdy or other um, fleece waterproofing membranes. And they will actually thin set straight to the pan liner. So you cannot put thin set directly on a pan liner. That's not the way they're meant to work. You can, of course, put thin set directly on curdy because it has the anchoring fleece to it. So again, I think there's just confusion between the two systems. As long as you can remember, there's basically two main systems and you follow the directions for each of those, um, you'll end up with a correct install installation. So that's the first mistake that I see. I'd say probably say that's number one. Of all the problems that I see come through in emails or when I'm doing my coaching plans, if they're stuck, um, that's probably the number one mistake that I see. And again, that is something that will lead to major water damage. 10, 15 years down the road, you could have um, thousands, thousands of dollars in, in water damage. Uh, number two, I would say, is a bad slope on shower pans. I get this a lot. I get a lot of things where, um, you know, a homeowner reaches out to me and they say, how do you fix, you know, I got a puddle in my shower pan. How do you fix it? And um, really, you know, most of the time they've had, you know, a tile person do it and they go, you know, my tile guy did it and he left and, you know, we're dealing with these puddles. And uh, there's usually a few reasons for that happening. Uh, one is, uh, you know, especially with the foam pans, if you're doing curdy, uh, not leveling the floor, the subfloor before you install the shower or the foam pan. Right. So if your floor is out of level and you just thin set that foam pan and put it down and it's not level, those foam pans are pre pitched. So you're, you're messing up the pitch and it, it won't drain correctly. So um, I did a video a few months back on using self leveler to get your subfloor 
perfectly flat and level before you put the foam pan down. I would say that's a, that's a common mistake that I see. Um, the other thing would be is not setting the bonding flange correctly in either a foam pan or a mortar bed uh, because you know these hook into a ABS waste pipe, two inch ABS. And a lot of times people struggle with the correct level to get the flange. You know, maybe their pipe is sitting up too high or they can't get their trap in right. So this is up sitting up higher than the foam pan. And often what happens is people get into it, they get the foam pan down, they go to stick their bonding flange drain down and it's sitting up too high. And they go, oh, well, it's, you know, it's sitting up a quarter, half inch or whatever. And they think, oh, well, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll fill in the thin set. Well, you know what that's going to do if you do that, it's going to create a flat spot or even a dip. So we actually see, I actually see a lot of um, puddles around the drain where they messed up on the height of the drain and they tried to feather it in and then they got this dip right here and they end up with a puddle of water near the drain. And again, important to note that with these bonded systems, they are not meant to have standing water on them. Uh, if you've seen my tests, you see what happens when Curdy uh, has uh, standing water on it. They're not designed to do that. They're designed to be used, to dry out and get used again. If they're standing water, water will find its way out. And, and that I think that even goes for, for Red Guard and Hydroban. I know they say you can use them in submerged applications, but you'll notice and, you know, chime in on here if, if you can, um, if you notice, like if you do red guard and it dries, it dries the deep dark red color, the deep color, when it's not dry, it's like a pink color, all right? So you get it on, it dries, it's the red color. You do a water test on it and you let it fill up, what color does it turn? <laughs> it turns back to the pink color. So when I saw that happening, I was like, and the same thing with um, Hydroban, so when I was thinking, I was like, well, if it's changing color, that means the water is somehow penetrating into that membrane. And so I did a test with um, the one I actually built here in my shop. I let it, I let Hydroban sit for like, it was like, it was over a month. I don't know, maybe like five weeks. It just, cause I did the water test and I just let it sit. And a few areas of the Hydroban started to peel up. And so, you know, take that for what it's worth, not an official test. I'm not going to say it's a bad product or anything, but these systems, in my opinion, from everything I've seen are meant to be used to dry out in between uses and then be used again. I do not believe they are meant to be in a submerged puddle. So that's why with the system it's really important not to have that puddling under your shower pan. So when I'm coaching somebody and they say, oh, well, can I, um, just, you know, you know, just keep using it. It's waterproof. I say, no, the puddling is probably going to lead to bigger issues than just sitting a puddle, which sucks in your shower. You don't want to be standing in a puddle when you're showering and, you know, trying to scoop it down the drain when you're done. Um, so um, that's, that's one thing I see also. So if that's like a foam pan or a bonded system, um, a bad mortar bed will cause, of course, you know, people who, who don't float a lot or they struggle doing their mortar bed slope with their dry pack. Um, of course, you can get your slope off. You can put, you know, too little slope on it. Uh, TCNA guidelines are between a quarter inch and a half inch per foot. Um, you can do too much. Some people get way too much slope on it, which can be a slip hazard. It's, it's not going to mess with the functionality of a draining i mean, it'll actually drain better uh, but you know you get too too steep of a pitch and it's uncomfortable to stand on and you could slip on it so that's why they aim for that quarter to half half inch per foot now um usually a bad mortar bed um and then well so bad mortar bed is usually just technique right it's usually um someone who doesn't have the skill to do it and that's why i I advise people sometimes I say, you know, if you've never floated a mortar bed before and you don't plan on doing it repeatedly, then a foam pan is probably the better way to go for you because the first time you do it, and you guys can probably um, share experience with that, the first time you float a mortar pan 
it's probably not going to be that pretty. So, um, but it's worth learning if, if you're a tile guy and you're a pro, or even if you think you're going to do three, four, five more of them, yeah, go ahead and learn to float a pan. Um, so poor execution, you know, not reading your levels right, not screening right can lead to those uh, slopes being off. Uh, but the other thing is with mortar pans is um, crumbling or dry or, you know, everything sloughing off the next day after you float. And usually what that is from is just taking too long while you're floating. So um, I would say if you don't get your mortar bed and, and temperature and humidity is going to affect it, of course. Right. So but if you can't get your shower pan done within about an hour from the time you mix the dry pack. Uh, you're probably going to have a lot of um, sloughing off and dry patches coming out when you vacuum it the next day. So um, you got to figure you got to be quick. So it's always better to have help, who, someone to mix it, carry it, hand you stuff so you're not wasting time. You got to be quick with it. And then also um, sometimes I think people are packing it too hard and kind of breaking up the deck mud as they slam their their trowels into it. Um, and then just, yeah, taking too much time, messing with it too much. Uh, deck mud likes to be poured out, just tamp down, screed it off, tamp down, finished. You know, that's, it, it likes to just not be moved around too much. So um, that's, uh, that's one thing I see. The, the sloughing off, if, if you do a mortar bed and it, it's sloughing off a little bit on the surface, it can be, a lot of it can be fixed just with thin set, right? It's not really hurting anything. So I tell people, you know, if it's crumbly on the top, vacuum out any pitted areas, then skim it with thin set and let that dry, then you should be good to go. So bad slope on shower pans, I would say, is number two. Um, number three, and again, as I'm going over these, what I'm calling the top three, uh, I would say, you know, these aren't cosmetic. I'm, I'm trying to stay away from cosmetic stuff. Uh, this is more like functionality problems. Um, cosmetic, I mean, we could go talk, you know, that that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I have a lot of people who ask me, you know, uh, do you, is this a bad tile job? You know, they'll just show me like, you know, the tile, tile work. And I say, well, I don't know what the standard is in your area. I don't know what you paid for it. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of factors. I, I noticed geographically uh, the you know, we're in California, we're in a, a high dollar market, uh, high expectations. Uh, you go to some other places, just, expectations just aren't as high. For, so for me to say, yeah, yeah, that's cosmetically a bad job. I can't really say that, you know, you'd have to tell, I don't understand the market there. So, uh, so cosmetics aside, um, this is more functionality of the tiled showers. Uh, so number three, I would say um, that, Sorry, I get sidetracked. I want to get to, to you guys' questions here in a second. But, um, oh, yeah, what do you guys think about the camera, too? So I'm actually able to use um, my Canon EOS R. Um, I just learned how to hook it up into my laptop, so I'm pretty stoked on using uh, the camera and not my, uh, my little webcam on my computer. Um, and can you guys hear me all right? My, uh, I, I, I'm just using my laptop audio, so... Just want to make sure you guys can hear me all right. Oh, Canon. Okay, good to know. Camera and voice is out of sync a, a tad. Uh, so a little blurry. Um, yeah, that the video quality could be based on your internet connection too. No, it's not. Huh. So yeah, okay. Well, cool. I, you know, I'll try to figure out the audio on the on the next one. Um, a little blurry. Okay. I got some video is dialed. Okay. Yeah. So if you're getting a blurry, if you're getting a blurry picture, it's probably, uh, um, you know, your your upload. I don't know if it's download or upload on your end, but um, yeah. So. Anyways, enough of that. We'll work on that. I'll go back and read through these. Video and audio, great. Not blurry at all. Blurry for me too. Oh, okay, cool. Right on. Okay, so I would say number three 
Number three would be um, uh, letting letting the thin set skim over before installing the tiles. So um, we call that the thin set flashing over. Uh, that's one thing a lot of beginners struggle with. Again, um, th these are time sensitive materials we're using, right? We're using mortars, they dry. So, um, so yeah, I, I've seen a lot of issues with tiles being loose on walls, tiles being loose on floors, the grout's cracking. People say, well, why is the grout coming out? I keep grouting and it keeps coming out. Well, the tile is broken bond from that thin set. And the number one reason for that is, I mean, it can have, it can have problems with deflection too, right? If you're on a floor and it's moving, you know, thin set will break that bond over time. But most of the time what it is, is it's from combing the thin set and then taking too much time between when you comb your thin set and putting the tile on top of it. So if you read your bag of thin set or go to the product data sheet, you'll find um, open time. It's, it's one of the um, qualities that they'll list on the thin set itself. And open time is the time that they say that you can, and that's usually done at like um, 70 degrees, um, you know, middle, whatever regular humidity is, I don't know, is that 50% or something? But uh, so they take that figure and then that open time is when you trial, you know, you trial your thin set and however long that is before you put your tile on it, um, that's the open time. So um, what you'll find is, is the higher modified mortars will have a longer open time. And that's one of the good qualities of, about it. And um, that's one of the reasons why you shouldn't be using unmodif unmodified thin set. There's no excuse, no excuse today to be using an unmodified thin set, even for Schluter. If you, um, oh, hey, Wendy, five bucks right on. Thank you. That'll get me, uh, it'll get me a gallon of gas here in California. <laughs> Wade, Wade, thank you very much. Um, yeah, right on. I really appreciate it, guys. Much love. Um, yeah, so that open time is, is very critical. I see a lot of problems because people, they trial an area of thin set, they go up the wall and then, um, you know, maybe their cut doesn't fit. They go, oh, shoot, I got to go back out to the saw, recut it. By the time they get back, it's taken too long. The thin set is set up and they put it in there, squish it in there, um, but it doesn't get a good bond. Uh, back buttering, you know, doing a skim coat on the back of your tile will help with that. But still, if it's flashed over too much, that even that won't get you a, a good bond. So pay attention to the open times, uh, use a modified thin set. And if you can put your fingers into the mortar, I always just do a touch test. I'll put just lightly, don't push your fingers into the mortar, but just tap your fingers on it. And if it doesn't come onto your finger, scrape it off and start over. That's just do the finger test, touch it and you go, oh, it's still tacky. Okay, now I can put my tile up. So, um, I would say also maybe the wrong trowel could use to some of that stuff, um, but most people know what trowels to use. Um, if you're doing a 12 by 24, for the most part, you want to use a half inch by half inch um, notch. If you're using um, smaller tiles than that, like 12 by 12s, uh, you can go, then you go to like the 3 8 notch. Uh, three eighths by three eighths, and then anything smaller, four by four, six by six, down to two by twos. You'll want to use a uh, quarter inch by quarter inch, little things smaller than that. Um, typically, I only use a V notch uh, when I'm doing uh, membranes, when I'm putting on my curdy or whatever fabric we're using. Really, quarter inch notch is, I mean, sorry, uh, three sixteenth V notch. That's usually the only time I use a trowel that small. It just doesn't put enough thin set on there because even if it's a smaller um, two by two or pebble, you know, th those have a mesh on them. So if you're not putting enough thin set, um, you know, the mesh is stopping it from embedding into the thin set and you'll, you know, they won't be bonded. So if, if you need to, you can take your quarter inch by quarter inch and just lay it a little flatter. Don't raise it up, put a little flatter, maybe like a 22 degree take a little, take a little bit of the thin set out. So it's not gooping up through the joints, but 
typically I don't go for setting tile anything under a, a quarter inch by quarter inch. Um, I guess flat glass tiles, if you got to, if they're clear, like a paper face glass, I'll use a 3 16 V notch because you're combing it and then um, you knock it down with a flat edge. So there's no ridges in it. So you got a really thin bed of mortar, but those, those glass tiles are perfectly flat. They don't have any mesh and um, they go right in. So um, I actually wrote number four. So, um, you know, as I was doing this list, I, I came up with another one and then I'll start getting to your questions. Um, oh, I said, um, yeah, but in the title of the video is three mistakes. That sounds way better than four mistakes, doesn't it? I guess I could do it to cut it on three or five, but four mistakes just doesn't make a good title. <laughs> but anyways, um, assuming um, I put assuming waterproofing can stop can't assuming the waterproofing can stop at the glass partition or shower door. So I see a lot where people are building, uh, see this on shower curbs a lot. They only waterproof. They don't even waterproof all the way over the edge of the outside of the curb. They'll stop it because, and, and what they'll tell me, they'll go, Oh, but I'm going to have glass there. Um, but that's not the way it works. And uh, the same thing, if you have a shower bench um, that's in plain, you know, you, you have to waterproof the side of the shower bench, even though it's outside of the shower. Because again, the way these systems work is, is water gets onto the thin set and it's wicking, it's going under it. it you know, we have wicking capillary action that's happening through thin set and, um, and also evaporation, right? It, the, the top of the curb is where a lot of the water, water vapor through evaporation, that's where it's escaping. So you'll see, that's why you see a lot of the shower failures on the outside of the curb, because that's where the water is coming out and evaporating and people stop their waterproofing right there. So always wrap your waterproofing up and over the curb, even though it's outside of where the glass partition is, because the glass is stopping water on top of the tile, but it's not stopping water that's underneath it. So anyways, I, I hope that these uh, four uh, things I addressed will clear some up, some something up for especially people who find this video later on and they see oh the three mistakes they look at it and they go oh well yeah i was i had a pan liner and i have a curdy drain that's not going to work or vice versa i have uh you know one of these drains and some curdy you know that's not going to work so i hope uh these videos just um you know keep keep the tile trade strong you know bad installations Whoever they're done by are bad for our industry um, because, you know, I even hear sometimes from people, they go, you know, oh, I won't do tile. I won't do tile because it, it fails all the time. Every tile shower has leaks in it. It's like, no, that's not the case. Um, just there's a lot of bad tile jobs out there from misinformed people. So that's my hope is to make our industry stronger. I love the tile trade. It's given me... Um, just, I've been just so blessed by uh, the tile trade, the trade work in general, doing bathrooms. I, I have a really, really uh, great life and I owe, owe pretty much all of my success to it. So I do not want to see it go away. So that's why you'll see the passion coming from me about tile is because I want to keep it going. And I, I um, anyways, that's, that's that. So uh, let's, let's check out um, some of, some of your questions. I see some of you guys are sharing information on here, which I think is so cool. Um, you'll see, I did a, I did a video that I uploaded on Tuesday, uh, about a grout problem that we had. And what was really cool about it was that we, there's like 375 comments on it in, in just two days and everybody's sharing information because grout problems are something that even every experienced tile, I could go down to, to Dow tile down here in Sacramento with all the pros and I could talk about a grout problem and they'll be dumbfounded by it. They'll be like, yeah, I had that happen. And I don't know what we did wrong. It just happened. And, you know, they say, Oh, 
you know, it's Polyblend. It's it's this brand. And, you know, so, some of that is true, but there's just a lot of things that we don't understand about what's going on. So like the more information, like I, I learned so much from reading those comments. I was like, oh, I didn't think of that. And I know that's helping everybody else. So I just think that's really cool that we're on here sharing information. Um, we got a room of, we have 208 people on the stream right now. I just think that's so cool. You know, imagine us all sitting in a room, uh, 200 people, uh, 209, you know, probably be distracting because people be coming and going the whole time. But uh, this is this is really cool. Uh, Christian Clark asked about um, getting a general contractor's license in California as a tile setter. Uh, it's actually pretty tough to do. Um, it took me it took me a while. So I, I got my my C54, which allows us to do tile work here in California. I got my C54 in 2003. And um, all I had to do was um, is it was, it was kind of like the stated income loans of that time. If, if you're my age, you remember back in the early 2000s, that's how we bought our first house. You basically just said, um, you told the bank, the mortgage broker, right? You said, oh, I make X amount. They didn't check your, you know, your tax returns. They didn't check bank statements. They didn't check anything. You say, this is how much I make. Oh, here's your loan. Hey, that I know that led to uh, a lot of problems, but that's the way it was. That's kind of, that was similar to my experience with getting my um, C54 license. It was pretty easy. I had my boss at the time. He, well, he wasn't my boss anymore. He was my old boss. Uh, he just signed off and said I worked for four years, which I don't think I did. I think I only worked with him for um, two years, and then I was then I did was working on my own without a license for two years. So he he vouched for me. It was cool. Anyways, I got it. The um, the general B was tough. I think the first time I tried to get it because what happened was when the market crashed in 08, um, I started just taking on any job I could. Um, you know, I think there was a few, few months there where I was just working. I didn't even have a helper. I was just working by myself. And, and up to that point before I always had five or six tile guys and we were cranking, you know, and then when the market crashed, it was like, Oh shoot, you know, there's no work out there. I was scrounging. So, any job that I ended up getting, I wanted to, you know, do the demo. I wanted to put the drywall up. I wanted to plumb in the valve. I wanted to, you know, run a can light. I wanted to paint. I wanted to do, cause I was in a bathroom. And so I started doing that. And so that's what, that's kind of how I got into doing bathrooms because I was just by myself with the helper. And then um, I go, well, you know, I did that for a few years and I go, well, I got the experience. I know how most of this stuff works. And I applied to get my license and it was, um, oh, Daniel, thank you very much from Connecticut. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that. Um, and so I think I applied in like 2014 um, and they shot me down. They said, no, you need to have um, payroll records showing that you worked as a journeyman, you know, in three different trades for a general contractor, which I didn't have, right? Because I'm working for myself. Um, and I was like, well, I got invoices showing that I did all these other jobs. They said, no, invoices won't work. Um, you need permit. They said, but you could use permits. If you had permits on a job, we can use those as experience. I go, well, I was unlicensed, so I wasn't getting permits on the jobs. So I didn't have that. And so I kind of just put on the back burner. I go, okay, you know, I'm still, still operated. Um, I'm not going to say I did a whole lot of work without my general contractors, but I think, you know, we, we'd still do demos. I don't know if you need, I don't think you need a general to do demos, but we'd still sweat in a valve here and there, do that stuff. But um, what actually got it for me was um, in 2015, uh, we built a small cabin up in the mountains, a um, little town called Sierra City, where my my dad actually lives lives up there now. It's about an hour north of uh, Tahoe. Um, and we had a little, I, I had bought in a little plot of land from my aunt, maybe back in 2005. 
and um, it was next to my dad's. And then so we'd finally saved up a, enough money and I got a construction loan, I think in around 2015 um, to build a small cabin. And it was just it was a it was an 800 square foot, two bed, one bath, just really simple cabin. But, you know, there's nothing simple in California. You can't just build. So as an owner builder, I was able to build that cabin. And so I was able to use all of that work experience from that permit. Um, and once I had that permit to show the CSLB as proof that I was working. So isn't that funny? Like I could work on somebody else's job, but they wouldn't give me a contractor's license, but I could work on my own house with basically no supervision and they would give me a contract. So it doesn't, doesn't make sense, but that's, a, that's how it worked. And that's how I was able, once I did that, I was finally able to uh, get my general B contractor's license. So uh, that's been huge for us. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, our, our revenue coming in and just the ease of managing jobs, we're not doing so many jobs. It's um, we can kind of camp out a little longer on jobs and, you know, the guys get used to it. And most of our bathrooms go about three or four weeks. Sometimes they go longer. Um, so it's just nice. I love doing the whole thing. Uh, we do pretty much everything in house um, except for, you know, we don't fabricate our, our countertops. Um, some of the glass stuff, like if we're doing a tricky glass enclosure, I'll sub that out, but pretty much everything else we do in the bathrooms between myself, Zach, um, Steve, Kirk, and Luke, we just handle it all. So uh, it's been huge for us, but that's a really good question. Oh, here's a good question. Um, Oh, I'm going to answer this one re real quick. Can't you lose your license if you do work that requires a permit without making sure the permits are pulled? Um, I think if you get, you know, the CSLB is, um, you know, they like, they're, they're on the contractor side. They don't want to put somebody out of business if, you know, say you're doing a bathroom and really, um, I don't know, that's, you know, most of the times when we get a permit for a bathroom, they almost act like they're surprised that we're getting it. But it's like, um, if you, I know that I've had friends, I've never been on a job where we didn't pull permits and, you know, they came in and said anything, but I had a, one of my contractor friends that happened and they just said, oh, you just need to go to the city and get a permit. So I think, I mean, if you're, it's one thing, if you do, I would say, if you do good work and it's not a disaster and you don't piss the people off and they're not trying to sue you, I'm sure you get in trouble that way from the CSLB. But really, um, I think with the permits, it's more of a municipality. I don't, it's not a state thing for us anyway. So each of our, each of our municipalities are what control the permit process, you know? So if you're in the city of Rockland or if you're in the city of Lincoln, or if you're in the city of Roseville, or if you're in, you know, Placer, unincorporated Placer County, or if you're in Sac County, or if you're in Sacramento City, they all have different, you know, their own, you know, and they also have different um, standards. I mean, so Placer County, for the most part up here, we have to use dent shield in our showers. You go to Sac County, they're okay with using purple drywall in showers. So it's different. It's, it's local municipalities that control the permit process. So I think their laws state, you just, if, if, you know, say an inspector's driving by, they see a remodel going on. And again, I've only heard of this one time and doing work for 20 years, you know, they came in, they're, they're government workers. They don't really, I mean, they don't really care. I don't think. Um, so, but yeah, they, they just tell you, you know, if they were to come by, they'd say, Oh yeah, you need to get a permit for this. Go to the, go down to the, um, the city clerk and, or, you know, whatever you got to do. So and that's my experience anyways. There's another question. I'm sorry. I got <laughs> Bill. That's funny. Uh, let's see. 
and I'm not advocating for you guys to to not pull permits or pull permits. I'm not. I really. I don't think by getting a. Well, I'll say it this way: getting a permit does not ensure you're going to have quality work. I'll just just put it that way. And vice versa. Just because you don't get a permit doesn't mean you're going to have a bad job. Oh, okay. Fly by 804. That's the one I wanted to see. Um, what's your opinion on the drains on limited linear wall drain? And do linear drains have a higher rate of failure than standard drains? I would say yes. I see a lot of problems with um, linear drains. Uh, they're trickier to install. There's more surface area for failure, right? Um, if I take, you know, one of these drains, you know, there's a small surface area of connection to right here. Linear drain, you have you have a long channel, and I'm I'm just talking bonded drains right now. If if you're if you're doing old school, if you're hooking into uh, one of these guys. Um, you know, they still have, you know, the weep type. I don't think those fail as much as the bonded flange. Uh, like, uh, like some of the stuff I see on the market where they're just waterproofing right to a flange. Um, those I don't trust. So drains on, I think you said drains on limit. I'm not familiar with that particular model, but like the, um, I see some where you just waterproof right up onto the stainless steel and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, you know, and I've seen failures with those happen, but you have to think, you know, there's, there's a lot of points of contact that have to be sealed. I've actually seen, I've only seen it once, but I've seen a failure on a Curdy line drain that somebody emailed to me. Um, Schluter actually took care of it, which was really cool. They paid for all the labor and everything, but it was like a 42 inch Schluter, linear drain that was installed like in 2014 and you know the glue that holds the curdy to the stainless steel on their bonding flange it actually separated it delaminated because there's a lot of again i think there's just a lot of surface area you have two different you got tension going on those the sealant whatever they used i think they use like a hot a hot glue um sealant um uh, it came apart so whenever I see like the laticrete drains, I hope you never see me using a laticrete bonding flange drain on a job because that's kind of the same principle. They're just taking a stainless steel channel and you're just coating hydro band to that. And that's the only waterproofing. And so that's why you'll see me use laticrete products. You don't see me using their bonding flange drains because uh, there's going to be a ton of failures with them. They need to change them and they probably will. Let's see. What's the best grout you recommend for a tile shower? Um, again, I've done a lot of testing on, on grout, um, mostly, you know, cause the high performance grouts are the, are the most popular ones. Customs prism, um, Ultra Color, Mape's Ultra Color, FA. Um, what are the other ones? Tech Power Grout. The, those type of grouts. Oh, Laticrete Permacolor. Um, they seem to all have the same characteristics to them. The nice thing about them, the plus, now this is the plus, very good color consistency. You rarely have a color shading issue. And I say rarely, I've seen it happen. But um, the problem with them is they are not very abrasion resistant. Like you saw in my test that I did, mo all of those grouts that I just mentioned, I'm not picking one out more than the other. You could take a plastic spacer when the grout is wet and it just rubs right out. So if you took a scrub, we did it with a scrub brush. We did a couple different tests. We did like a scrub brush. We did a plastic spacer. Um, of course, a razor knife takes it right out like it's butter. But um, so what when we use Prism, um, I'd say Prism, the reason I like Prism, let me see, I probably have a grout chart. Yeah, let me grab this. So, so what I like about um, Customs is 
they just have really good colors. I mean, look at all the, they have all these beautiful colors that just seem to go with the tiles we use. Um, Laticrete, I don't have one of their charts because um, we usually can't seem to find a good color to go with our tiles. I don't know. They have like half of the colors and then, you know, there's only like four or five colors of Laticretes that we really use. So Customs just has a lot better colors. Mape has good colors too. I like Mape's grout chart. Um, but if we're using Prism, uh, what I'll, I'll tell the customers, I'm just up front. I just say, you know, if you're, you <laughs> sounds, I can't even believe it. I'm having a hard time even saying it, but it's like, just the grout is not meant to be scrubbed. Just go easy on it. Don't, don't go to town on it. You know, when you clean your grout, you can pretty much just wipe it, you know, with a sponge, you don't need to take a scrub brush and, and go gnarly on it. Um, so at least I'm letting them know that this is what, the, this is how the grouts are. It's, it's nothing that, and this is just the way they are. And then if they have a problem with that, if they say, oh no, I want something better, then I offer them um, either Spectralock One, we've been using Spectralock One, which is, is better. It's definitely better on abrasion. Um, it doesn't stain. Um, but it isn't as hard as epoxy. They say it's like epoxy, but it's not. If you take Spectralock 1 and Spectralock epoxy, night and day on abrasion, epoxy is so hard, you can barely scrape it and you can scrape it hard. So we just did a job. So um, long story short, we use a lot of fusion. Um, again, it's availability. It's stocked everywhere. It's got great colors. So we use it. Um, we used a CEG light on a shower for the first time. Um, that was two weeks ago. And the guys really liked the CEG light epoxy that's customs. So again, you got a really good color range and you can get an epoxy, which is, um, a two part, you know, two part epoxy. It's got an A and a B mix them together and, um, pretty easy to clean up. You know, it's, it's, Real similar to cleaning up uh, a premix Spectralock one, but when it dries, I mean, it is it's hard. It's like as hard as a tile. It's it's rock hard. So I usually am up front with my customers about the grout, and then you know that's that's what it is. We might move to more epoxy, especially the shower floors. But um, you know, I thought we were going to use more of the Spectralock one. Which is nice because you, the the thing that's nice about a premix like Spectralock One versus an epoxy, uh, if you don't use it all, then you know because a lot of times you have touch ups or something, you know you don't have to mix up the whole unit and then it's gone because epoxy is expensive. You know Spectralock One, you can put the lid back on it, put it back in your shelf. You got a touch up, you come back, you can touch it up. So that's nice. But again, we we're running into the colors, you know, my wife does the design in here and, you know, we're just like, dude, we can't find a color to match this tile. The customs colors just go so much better with our tiles. So hope that answered something. What's up, Apex? Good to see you, brother. Yeah, check out the replay. Uh, Care epoxy grout. No, I haven't. Um, you know, uh, epoxy got a pretty bad name um, for the early stuff. Before they came out with the, the you know, the the two-part, you know, it was a three-part, you know, Customs had their, what did Customs called their their epoxy? It was 100%, they called it 100% solids epoxy. Um, Spectralock, again, was three parts, an A and a B and a C, and um, Spectralock was always better than the Customs and the other brands of epoxy, uh, but you could really get into trouble with the epoxy. It was just hard to clean up. It, it'd go off too fast and didn't wipe up as nice. Uh, so epoxy has gotten a lot better, I've noticed, especially with the CEG light and the Spectralock. You know, you still got to be careful. You got to make sure you wipe it off, but it's not like... Um, you know, people used to avoid it like the plague, you know, tile guys would be like, no, I'm not doing epoxy, you know, it's like now, now it's gotten a lot better. So 
I think it's becoming more of an option and that might really help our trade too. Like if we're using, cause right. You probably get, if you're a tile guy, you probably hear that a lot. People say, Oh, I hate grout. I don't want grout. I want, you know, just one solid sheet. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't look as nice as tile. So um, if we're start using epoxy grout, that's basically like having one big tile. There's no maintenance on the grout. It's never going to stain. It's never going to come out. It's never going to change color. So maybe we should start using more epoxy grout. Yes, Laticrete is now at Floor and Decor. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm happy about that. Um, we, we don't get it floor and decor. I have other sources to get, get it, but, um, I love Laticrete Hydroban. I love Hydroban sheet membrane. I like Hydroban board when you could get the board. Um, however, I don't like their drains. I don't like their grout colors. I think their grout's good stuff. I just don't like their colors. Um, that's my take on it. Um, you know, we've actually been using some Schluter all set because our Arizona tile, which is only about five miles up the road, they, they stock, um, Schluter all set and it's my guys like it. So I don't care, you know, whatever they like we'll use. Um, but, uh, but right now, actually we just stocked, um, we, we, I had a pallet of all set. We ran through that. Um, this next stocking order, I went through DeSoto sales there in, um, North Highlands. If you're in the Sacramento area, go check out DeSoto Sales. They're up there um, off of Roseville Road and off of Palm, Madison, North Highlands area. And um, they do Laticrete. So I just got a pallet of LHT Plus and a pallet of um, Trilite, which is basically like Customs Pro Light, you know. And then LHT, I guess, would be like Versabond, Versabond LHT, you know. So anyways, I wanted to have a medium bed. Not, well, we don't call them medium beds anymore. We call them LHT. So I wanted to have an LHT because that's we, we've never found one thin set that can do all things. And I've tried and tried and tried just because of, you know, I don't want to stock a bunch. I'd rather just stock one thin set, right, that does everything. But because you need white and gray for one. And then you but what I found is you can't we we tried doing it with Ardex, but Ardex um Ardex still, the X5 is a good thin set, but it shrinks. Um, it's not meant to be built up too much. They say you can use, I think a half inch by half inch is a max, which compresses to a quarter inch. So if you're building your tiles up, it shrinks and we've had tiles break bond with it. Um, so we're using Trilite, which I guess Trilite could be um, an LHT also, but it's really expensive. Um, so we like to have a good LHT mortar, uh, with a little more working time. Um, Trilite has a real short bucket life. You get two and a half, three hours out of it and it's done. LHT plus lasts longer. So we like a nice LHT mortar and a lot and a nice, um, like pro light or Trilite that you can set backsplashes with, or you need a little stickier. And then of course I always keep a Laticrete Multimax light around. Um, and that is strictly for using our sheet membranes. We only use Multimax light on our sheet membranes. For one, it's very expensive. Um, and for two, it, as you guys have already known, you see in my videos that it basically has zero water penetration between sheets of membrane when you use it. So it's basically like a waterproof thin set. Um, so it's great for waterproofing. Uh, and it doesn't perform that well for us. Um, setting tile, we found that Multimax light sags more than we'd like it to. Um, it has a really weird consistency. It's like drywall mud kind of, it doesn't have sand in it. So it's, it's, um, it gets, it flings around, it dries on the tools weird. It's just, um, so we only use it for waterproofing. So yeah, I guess we're stocking three thin sets right now. Multimax light for waterproofing. Um, LHT for doing floors and then Trilight for doing walls and stuff. So, but we'll change, you know, I, I haven't found the thin set that I'm like so in love with that we never go with another brand. I think all brands have good things and, 
You know, it's funny that we ended up with Schluter all set. I'm sure that surprises a lot of you guys that um, because I have been pretty critical of Schluter. But again, I'll I'll use whatever is good for my company and my guys like. And the beautiful thing about um, my my YouTube, my channel and not taking sponsorships is that I'm, fr I'm free to make all of those decisions. I don't feel weighed down. Um, you know, I'm free to give my opinion on everything. You know, you see me wearing a Schluter hat and then you'll see me make a video showing how Curdy leaks. Um, you'll see me buy a Laticrete thin set and then you'll see me bad mouth their drains. Um, it's, it's cool. We can have an open, honest discussion, which is pretty rare um, these days. It seems like everybody can be bought out and there's a price on everything, but it's just not worth it. I mean, I've, um, I've had talks with people and every time I come to it, I'm like, dude, that's just, that's just not worth it. My channel's doing great. It's doing good enough. Thanks to you guys. I, you know, we're fully supporting. I get revenue from Google. You guys buy merchandise. You, my coaching plans are doing awesome. So being self-supporting is, is vital. I found is it's, it's vital to this channel and what it is. If you ever see me start like selling products, um, you might want to change the channel. <laughs> I don't know. Not saying that that will never happen, but I'm doing my best to, to keep it from that way. Um, you know, something different, you know, something like, um, you know, true work was giving me a little bit of a, a kickback on, you know, when people would click on the link for the true work work close. Um, and that was cool, you know, cause I think that's, that's removed from the tile. So if I'm promoting, if I say, Hey, you know, I like these pants, it's not the same as, you know, getting in bed with like Schluter or Laticrete or something, which is really going to skew what I'm saying. Um, but even at that, even with the true work, you know, I, you notice I, I stopped doing it and, you know, the talks with them, I'm like, guys, it's just not, it's just not worth it. What you guys are paying us is pennies. And I'm sitting up here like a, you know, you know, schlepping the, you know, your product and, you know, being cheesy saying, you know, oh, go click on this link. And, um, you know, it's, it's just not worth it. So um, I'm super stoked that you guys are here supporting it just by you guys watching. We got 256 people here watching. Are you guys watching my videos, sharing them? Um, I, I hope, I hope, I hope that I never have to do that. So um, just really blessed to, to have you guys. <laughs> Wade says less than a hundred likes. Yeah. I, for some reason, I don't get a lot of likes on my videos, but I know you guys like them cause you watch them. So I don't, I don't get caught up on that. You don't ever hear me say, Oh, like this video. I mean, if you're watching it, I know you like it. And even if you don't like it and you're watching it and it's still cool, you're still here. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Let's all smash the like button. Oh, hey, honey, my lovely, beautiful wife just hopped on. She said, good bit, Isaac. Oh, I love you, honey. I love you. I just liked we forget. <laughs> yeah, it's not it really. It, having you guys on here is it means everything. So I'll take a couple more questions. Where are we at? I was going to try to knock off here at six but we'll see i always go over because i really enjoy again i enjoy doing this 245 people that's just that's incredible that's just so cool okay tile patterns it's nine here <laughs> joe mason it's nine o'clock i know so i was trying to figure out a good time you know, because we're on the West Coast, it's one of those time zone things, right? If I, I would prefer to do it earlier, like I'd say four o'clock would be a good time for a live stream. Um, but over here, you know, guys aren't off work, they're not at home. 
Um, so I guess five o'clock, most people off work, you know, eight o'clock over on the East coast still isn't too late, but nine o'clock, I know it's starting to push it. Oh, we got someone from the UK, Gixer 750 pilot. Hey, good morning. 1 AM. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, in the UK, they, I, you know, they got some methods over there. Um, for the most part, what they got in the UK, and that's one of the beautiful things that I have with this channel from talking to you guys, is that I get to find out about different methods all over the country, all over the world. Um, UK, they like to use just preformed shower trays, like acrylic shower trays. And then they just put freaking drywall up on the wall and tile them. They're like, why are you guys doing tiled shower pans? Like, they don't get it because probably because they seem fail all the time. But um, different methods from all over the world. It's really interesting. And I hope someday to be able to go and visit and kind of showcase tile contractors in their hometown, because I'm just, that fascinates me. I love finding out um, about tile methods and also people. I love to hear um, people's stories. I mean, I'd love to hear your story. So hopefully I can like travel to towns and maybe do features um, kind of like I did with the San Diego one. Um, that was a few years ago. Um, I did it with um, Smiles and Tiles, uh, Michael in San Diego, and we've continued to be friends. I mean, it was really cool. We got to hang out. We went and played golf, and I got to show, like, his methods. And the cool thing is, is that um, Google, um, since I put, you know, Tile Coach in San Diego as the title, um, you know, the algorithm for Google, people can hop on and they go, Tile Contractor in San Diego, if they're in San Diego, right? And that video pops up. So they get to see like it's like a feature of his company. And he said he's gotten a ton of work just from that video, even though the video doesn't have very many views. I haven't checked it, but I think over two years, I think it has under 10,000 views. And but those are all views mostly dedicated to a geographic area that Google is honed into. So if I did that all around the country, um, and I found, you know, if you are a tile setter and I went, OK, you know, you're in Seattle, I'll fly up to Seattle, we'll do this video. I, I want to find out about your methods, find out a little bit about you. We'll make a video. You know, you don't got to pay for it anything because it's going to build my YouTube channel, but you're going to get a ton of work. It's like a total win win at no cost to whoever, you know, it's, it's like getting free leads basically. And it's building my channel, creating something a little more interesting than just me, you know, doing tile work or talking like this all the time. So, um, that's, that's one of my many ideas that goes through my brain. Karen Payne, come to Denver and check this out. Uh, we do. Um, um, if you've seen the Jason on the Shower for Bow project, if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend. Oh, thank you. Some days you make money. Some days you make friends. One fast G hatch. 20 bucks. That's so rad. Um, yeah, see, and, and so somebody's asking me about um, San Jose, it's right down the road. I get calls all the time for for East Bay, Oakland, San Jose, Fremont, um, the Peninsula, San Carlos, San Bruno, San Francisco, you know, San Ramon. I get all, you know, and I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to recommend anybody that I don't personally know. So by me going and actually seeing one of their job sites, because pictures don't, don't do it, right? There, there's a lot of stuff you see and then you look up close and you really see it. So not only finding, you know, seeing their job sites in person, but then meeting them and getting a feel um, face to face, you know, the vibe you get from people, then I could really, you know, then I'd feel confident, you know, if somebody reaches out and they wouldn't even have to reach out to me because again, they do a Google search, my video would pop up on there and they go, oh, this is who Tile Coach recommends in San Jose. Anyways, cool ideas. But I was getting back to um, um, Denver. Uh, I hope Jason, Jason watches most of my videos, but Jason and Eileen in Denver that we did the Shower for Bow project for, if you haven't seen that video, uh, you got to check it out. Again, it wasn't a video that um, 
YouTube, it didn't hit the algorithm for whatever reason. I think it's because it's really long. It's like an hour long video, but it's basically the story of building a shower for Bo, who at the time was eight years old and he had a disability. Um, he had his, his feet amputated and he needed a shower. So um, actually you guys pitched in and we all, we went out to Denver, did the project. And then um, we we're like family now. I mean, it's, it's, it's so cool. We got to, I spent, you know, a week, Marissa came out um, just um, this summer. They came out here. We went up to the mountains and um, had a really cool time. So um, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's just so cool. I, it's something that I really enjoy meeting people and getting to know them. And so this, this will kind of just build on that. And, um, Bill, 50 bucks, dude. Dude, that's so awesome. I will. I will keep up the killer work. Um, that's rad. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, so that's the, the Denver thing. Um, I don't do Facebook. I have, I have like a thing against Facebook. I don't know why. Um, it never worked out for me. I tried to hop on like... Um, tile geeks and you know a few of the tile facebook groups i was like oh my gosh you guys i don't know what what's going on there with um i just don't like the format it's it's not a fun place to be it just seems like it's a it's a popularity contest it's just a lot of ego just not not what i'm i'm up for so i don't know if that's just my bad experience or that's how facebook is but um I like YouTube. YouTube is just a great format for um, really sharing information and uh, the community just seems to really, really work well. <laughs> Tile setters on Facebook have way too much testosterone. Yeah. Or not enough therapy. You can have a lot of testosterone, but work on those issues, brother. I mean, we all got them. <laughs> Karen asked, how do we get a hold of you if I need your advice? You could actually go to tilecoach.com. Um, we have coaching plans and I just added um, um, booking. I think under the page, I think it says booking services. It's um, you can pay, do it, just pay for a Zoom chat for like uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes. We can do it through Zoom and it, you can schedule right there. I'm just trying it out. I haven't even gotten one yet. I think I just got it up yesterday. So. Um, you know, that's that way, you know, I can't I don't feel right giving any advice without getting like the whole story and the whole story usually takes a while to get to and some pictures and some video like people ask me a basic question and I'm like, I can't and I get so many of those, especially if you reach out on Instagram, it's really hard. Like I'm like, I can't in two sentences figure out how to tell you what to do because I don't want to give you bad advice. So that's why I have the coaching plans. Um, I know you got to pay for them, but you know, it's, it's helping this whole thing. Um, you know, and most of the money that I make ends up going back in and, you know, we'll go out and do other projects. So one of the things, um, we have a project coming up in, um, Fort Myers, Florida, and that's actually the, the bracelet that I'm wearing. Um, the homeowner, we were, we were supposed to go out there in September, early September, like Labor Day weekend. Literally the day that um, the next day we were supposed to fly out. So Jason from Colorado was going to meet me. Um, I've had some of you. I, I got some notes and some seed money sent from you guys for the project. Literally, it was we we're supposed to fly out Saturday, Friday. Um, she. Um, her brother who, who we're, were going out there with called and said she got COVID ended up in the hospital. She's all right. But literally that day, so we're like, yeah, okay, well we're postponing it. We've tried. And he's, so her brother is going to help on the project. He's up in Maine. She lives in Fort Myers, Florida. So he wants to be there and which is cool. Um, I want him to be there too. Um, 
so coordinating us coming from California, Jason coming from Denver and Chris coming from Maine, it looks like everything's going to sync up um, March 1st. So that's the date. Um, but um, she made these bracelets and they're actually, I don't know if you can see them. Let me see if I can focus in on this. Um, but they're little discs. They're, they're all different little shaped beads. Come on, Canon, focus. Um, and actually what it is, is it's Morse code and it spells out tile coach. So she made a bunch of these bracelets. You'll see, I've been wearing them in the last, you know, my last few videos. I haven't said anything about it, but, um, she made them so that we could sell them on my website. And then she wanted to donate all of that money to the next project, not necessarily her project, but the next person that we get to help out. So. Uh, we got some really cool things happening that this channel isn't just about um, me. It's about, it's bigger. <laughs> it's bigger. And most of you who have watched for a while know that there's, there's a bigger message going on right here. And I hope it keeps growing and growing and that we are, um, yeah, that we make a difference. So um, I'll get these up because she made a bunch of them. And I guess that'll be another way you can support our cause again none of the none of the money that comes from these will go go to me at all or her it'll go straight to the next project we'll just set it in another fund keep track of it so um donnie what's up donnie from detail and remodeling he's out there in new jersey or new york or something i could hear his accent right now coming through the coming through the screen if you need a guy I think it's new jersey right donnie detail and remodeling um he's someone i would go visit and do a feature on um the thing the thing that um the thing that uh sorry one of the things like if i'm setting up and going and visiting people and doing video features on them i just need to make sure they're in the game for the long run right that they that they're in the game they're not you know because tile trade can chew you up and spit you out it's it's not easy work it's not easy dealing with clients it's not easy you know there's a lot of things especially when you're getting started that you could be like f this i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go sell schluter or something i don't know what it is whatever um so if I'm doing this, so Donnie would be a good one to do. I'm pretty sure he's in the game for, for the long run. Um, Michael, what's up from SoCal? The Scratch and Brown Hot Mop. I got to do one of those. I, that's that's, uh, that's going to be a, a video topic one of these days. I'm going to do a SoCal style installation up here in Northern California. So they don't put any wall board, right? They got they got studs on the wall and a hot mop. And that's what the tile guys walk into. There's nothing on the wall, no just bare studs, and they got a hot mop. So what they do is they come in and they put up roofing felt, tar paper on the walls, and they just bridge those studs. So there's give in between. You know, it's just like 30 pound roofing felt. I don't know what they use. And then they do a scratch coat. They put up, oh sorry, they do they do the paper, then they do um, lath, you know, they do expanded lath galvanized lath and they staple that into the studs so you got the paper and you got the lath and there's no backing so you could push in in that lath right and there's no no wall board and then they do a scratch coat they mix up their fat mud and they do a scratch coat they burn their their mortar into the the lath and then they do a scratch they take a um, you know, like a notch trowel or something. And I think they even like a stucco guys, they do a scratch, you know, they scratch the mortar. So it leaves um, like a rake in the mortar and then they come back the next day and then it's hardened. So then you can't push in between the studs and then they do their, what they call a brown coat, which is when you see me float our walls up here over wallboard, it's basically doing that step. So it's a two coat float done over two days, but they don't have to put up any wall board and it's usually over a hot mop. So I just wanted, I've never done it that way. And I want to, um, I want to do that. So Michael, stay tuned, brother. I'm going to do that. Maybe you can drive up here and uh, make sure I'm doing it right. I'm pretty sure I can do it. 
Daniel, thank you for uh, the donation. That's really cool. The super chat. Um, that's really cool. You know, I hope people are getting value. Like, so like my, um, my coaching plans that I mentioned that it, it's kind of weird that I'm asking people to pay for, for advice. Um, I look at it as there's, there's a lot of value in it. Like I know that I'm, <laughs> I'm helping people avoid a lot of mistakes that, you know, if you're paying, you know, 150 bucks for a half hour of advice, well, what if you, you tried to, if you didn't do that and you tried to figure things out on your own, you, again, you put in the wrong drain or you did something wrong, you're talking thousands of dollars. And so um, I know it's, I know there's value in it for people. Um, so that's why I keep doing it. And the results have been great. I mean, it's like, I get the feedback people, um, they share ACEV build 50 bucks, dude. This is crazy. I don't think I've ever had a donation on a live stream and you guys are just being so cool. So ACEV build, he actually, um, Vlade, he's, he's in Sacramento great guy. Um, he brought me a gift last week, he stopped by my shop. Um, and he's got a YouTube channel, um, uh, of our Northern California methods. That's pretty much all he does. He's really skilled craftsman, hard worker. So you can go check out his YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, so what I was saying is, is I know there's value in it and, and I look at it like, okay, well I have, I've been doing tile since the late nineties. Um, I dedicate a ton of time to learning and I have the resource of from all over the world. Like I'm constant. It's kind of like, I would say Joe Rogan is probably one of the most intelligent, knowledgeable men in the world because he gets to interview the most knowledgeable people from just a wide variety of subjects. So for me, it's, it's in a very small way like that with tile. I see all of the problems coming in. I see all the things that work. I see everything to do with tile. My life is, is like, that's my, my work life is dedicated to everything tile. And so I, I'm qualified to be like an expert and that's worth something. I mean, it's, it's worth something, right? Like if a doctor went, doctor goes to school for eight years and, you know, does all that. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to pay him. You, you wouldn't even blink an eye if you had to pay him 150 bucks for 30 minutes. And all he's probably going to do is write you prescription for a drug that's being pitched to him by some big pharmaceutical company. Right. But yeah, I, I had to throw that in there, didn't I? I had it going good and then I threw that in there. But <laughs> anyways, you know what I mean? I, I consider myself a knowledgeable professional in my field that I can actually add value to people and save them from like doing a bad job and really enhance them. So that's, that's my take on it. And if people can't afford it, but I think like, okay, so if you pay 150 bucks for 30 minutes, um, you know, but again, like job materials, a Schluter drain itself is $150. Like I would almost consider it like is, is just another necessity for a job. If you don't know how to do it, like, and the cool thing about when I, when I do these consults, is it alleviates all of the anxiety and stress. I could tell, you know, and they'll even share like, I've been losing sleep over this. I just didn't know if this was going to work or this. And, and like, they talk to me and they're like, Oh, I feel so much better. I'm like rock on, man. This tile project should be enjoyable. You shouldn't be stressing and losing sleep over it. Cause you're second guessing yourself. And if you go on YouTube, there's, you know, all of this conflicting information all over it. So you're unsure and you're picking up little bits and pieces from me and Sal and, hopefully not star tile, but maybe star tile and Landberg has some stuff and you're going, Oh, well, he said to do it this way. And he said to do it this way. And I don't know what to do. It's like, well, here, I'll get you on the straight path. Let's do it. Here we go. And so that's been really successful. It's been, it's been really good. Far exceeded my expectations. I'm stoked. Yeah. And most of our stuff, you know, most of my stuff is just on a website for free. I mean, that's, that's cool. We, YouTube has allowed access to um, information 
uh, that people would never have been able to have, especially if, if they, you know, didn't have the money to pay for education or something. Yeah, see, Michael says, watching your videos and seeing fail, real fails gives me the freedom to know stuff happens and not just to me. And that's, that's really cool. I know that hits, uh, I get that comment a lot that even like that grout video, it's something nobody wants to talk about it. Like you don't go on Instagram and see somebody go, oh, I, I did this and I, you know, there was an issue with it. What do you see? You, all you see is like this picture that's like perfect and everybody thinks oh every the job's going to be perfect dude and the reality is everybody knows deep down even though they're not sharing it that these things happen and so by bringing them out into the light it it makes people feel so much better they're like oh it's not me these things do happen and so not that you want to expect problems to happen but be okay with it if if they do be okay with yourself just know that it's not like especially because i think a lot of us who get into the tile trade um you know we can be really hard on ourselves i think it, it takes a special personality to do this job and to do it well we care deeply about it we're passionate about it and uh when we make a mistake we we can take it on like we're not a like, um, how, how could I say it? Um, like a mistake is a reflection of who we are as a person. Like, like, no, that's not what it is. We made a tile mistake. We are not the mistake, but that's how we can internalize it. You know, it's like, I used to do that a lot. I'd be like, oh gosh, you know, just feel so bad and feel like I'm not not, I don't know, not as good of a person or something like if I made this mistake and uh, we just need to realize that, that that happens, we're human, we're not perfect. And that's the reason why people are paying us to do it because it's a craft, it's an art. We're taking our blood, our sweat and everything, our passion and putting it into um, a work, a fixture in someone's house. So um, I'm glad that my videos do that, that, you know, people don't get so down on themselves. They see that even pros do it. And you could ask any pro like you could. That's why that grouting video had, you know, 400 comments on it. And, you know, a day and a half people were like, yeah, I ran into that, too. It's like, well, why isn't this talked about? like we should be OK talking about this stuff. Um, but we as you know, I think. We can just be kind of prideful and think like we're less of a person if we make a mistake, which it totally isn't true. It's like we we have an inherent value. We were born with it. We deserve to be here. You know, we're on this we're on this space rock in the middle of a universe that's infinite and expanding, and time is infinite. And here we all are together. You know, there's 194 right now together um life is so so much more to it than like something that we do or we perform you know i grew up thinking that my performance was like everything and if i didn't perform well you know like i played football did other things um if i didn't perform well that mean I, means i was less of a person and i'd get so down and that's just it's not true it's like i think it's been partly our society, partly how we were raised, you know, um, that that's the way we think, but we can get through that together. And these videos kind of just, they, they help with that. They bring some realness, some honesty. And, um, so just so you know, if you mess up, that doesn't mean you're less of a person. Doesn't mean you're less of a tile guy. It means you're human. And honestly, if you can get over that, it will make you a much better tile guy. It'll make you a better business person. It'll make you a more likable person. So, um, yeah, maybe the Facebook groups need to hear that little message. <laughs> oh. Like I said, I only wanted to go an hour, but here I am, an hour and 24. 
and we got 200 people staying strong with me. So maybe I'll take a couple more questions. Rainmaker said, let's go, Brandon. I don't know what that means. I'm just kidding. I know what that means. It seems to be working. Um, let's see. I once, once had a tile manufacturer contact my employer and make me stop posting images on Facebook and show their product in negative light when I had a dollar. <laughs> Christian Munn said, once had a tile manufacturer contact my employer to make me stop posting images to Facebook that showed their product in a negative light. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, I heard like in the, when I was really, you know, hammering the Schluter stuff pretty hard, um, you know, I heard, I caught wind that they were going to, you know, issue a cease and desist order. Um, I had a couple of the wholesalers in the area tell me that. And I don't know if that's a rumor. I never heard it from an actual shooter rep. Um, but I thought that was interesting because I was like, I haven't done anything that's misleading. I haven't done anything that's untrue. I haven't, you know, so there wasn't like slander in it. I'm like, well, so you can't show like, so you're just saying I can't show the limitations of your product. Is that what you would do? Um, and I don't think they wanted to touch that. And I go, well, if, if they did that, and here's what I said, you know, uh, Kyle at DeSoto, I told him, I said, if they did, that would make a great video, wouldn't it? And that's what they probably figured. But so I don't know what, what, um, people try to get at by, um, obviously you don't want to show, you know, marketing, marketing is, gosh, dude, you know, one of the issues in, that we have in a capitalist society is, is marketing right um things can be shown in a certain light and especially in this day of um not being able to hear all viewpoints on a either a particular subject or um or thing um that marketing is uh i mean it gets into people's brain it changes psychology it's it's really kind of warped and twisted and so um, you know, I'm definitely a capitalist and a supporter. I think America's the greatest system, um, ever made like for advancement and equality. And I don't want to get into about our past and what we've done. And I really don't want to go there. I'm just saying the limitation I see as, as far as marketing, because that's what we're talking about here is that, um, you know, capital capitalism gone awry is a bad thing. Um, and I think we're seeing that really for one of the first time me as somebody who would never second guess how great our country is um, to seeing what marketing and big corporations intertwined with government can do. Um, because basically the government now is just puppets of um, big corporations. And corporations, they don't have a soul. They don't have morals. Cor a corporation is like a machine. It's There's people in the corporation making decisions, but those decisions are primarily based just on profit. They're not based on moral principles. They're not, they're not based on what's best for people. They're, they're based on what's going to get their stockholders more money. And the people who are putting their money into corporations, that's pretty much all they seem to care about either. Like, you know, my stock's going up. Oh, cool. You know? Um, so this is the first time for me personally being able to see the limitations of capitalism and what it can do when it's gotten out of hand. Um, you know, the biggest transfer of wealth in the history of mankind happening, you know, over the last year with Amazon and, you know, all that stuff. So anyways, I'm in. Stop before I get too too deep. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but see, see, it's not really a free market because, you know, power begets more power. It's like, it's not really free. Um, well, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I Again, I, I, sh I shouldn't even speak on that. What the hell do I know? I just, you know, I'm just kind of ranting. and I'm not ranting. I'm just kind of like free thoughts coming out. I don't want to, I know I'm live. <laughs> I can't edit it, right? Like, my videos that I've, I, my regular uploads, I go, oh, I didn't like what I said. I'm going to edit it out. So I'm just going to shut up now like that. Okay. So <laughs> my wife just texted, I that's enough. So yeah. So you guys, um, I really enjoyed this. I hope you learned something, especially from the, uh, the first part of it. And um, I enjoyed being here with you. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody who donated. I think that's really cool. And um, last but not least, oh, hold on. Yeah. And um, last but not least, I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.